this August will mark 72 years in full-time ministry here at uh, in the west side of Fresno. Uh -huh. Before we moved here to this location in 1977, prior to that we were across the street. Direct across the street is a church right across the street from our, our um, location. Okay. Here. Okay. Across right, Reverend Chester yep. okay. And that's where we originated from. That's where the church was planted. That's where the church started. Original was a house and then it kind of grew and grew and grew and grew and they built a building. They acquired the property here. This used to be an old mobile trailer home mm. park. And they ended up acquiring the property. And then they, from what, what I was told, is one Sunday morning, Pastor Riggins, who is like the Moses of our church, mm -hmm. he ended up saying, okay, God has told us to leave this mountain, let's walk into the promised land. And they literally walked out of their doors and across the street. Because St. Rest has always been known as a community house, instead of just a church in the community, but a part of the community, mm -hmm. the roots to this community is literally underneath St. Rest Church. Pastor Shane Scott, who was my predecessor, um, my pastor, he changed the name in 2008 mm -hmm. to Pastor Riggins. Yeah. It used to be uh, uh, East Florence Avenue. Okay. And then based on all the work that Pastor Riggins did, the legacy that he had, he used to be the mailman for this same street. Hmm. I mean, for years. So he would do dual duties. He would be the mailman. And after getting off work, he would come right to the church to start studying and prep for sermons. And sometimes what I was told by members, older members, is that while delivering mail, they mm -hmm. would ask him to pray. And so he would have to look around to make sure he wasn't being watched. Right. And he would like act like he's handing an envelope and then have a word of prayer with him at the same time. I was born in um, Stockton, mm -hmm. in California. And um, born and raised inside of the church. My mother is a, was the minister of music at our church. My father was assistant pastor of the church. And I started preaching at 10 years old. And I had to stand on this platform, this little box in order to see over the pulpit to preach in 1994. <laughs> when I graduated from high school, I got accepted into Fresno State for football. And when I came to Fresno, my grandmother and Pastor Riggins had a very tight relationship through our district association. All our churches are part of this one big district called mm -hmm. the St. John District Association. So whenever a high school student or a college student leaves from one area and goes to another area, our district kind of makes sure that, that college student or the high school student has a church home to go to. Mm -hmm. And I had no choice. When I got here, Pastor Riggins was the only man that I knew because a couple of the other members that I knew had either graduated from high school and also moved on to college and were no longer here at the church. So reluctantly, I would come to St. Rest. I didn't want to be here. I was enjoying being in college, parties and, and, and the football life, traveling and all that stuff. Yeah. But Pastor Riggins just kept like this arm around me. He always had either a deacon or a man show up at my dorm room on a Sunday morning to knock on the door to tell me to come to church. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget one Sunday, I showed up to church, had two earrings in my ear, and he asked me to come to the pulpit to do the prayer. And I, I, I was, um, let's just say, I was still suffering the side effects of the night before. Uh -huh. And I walked up to the pulpit and embarrassed, I prayed and didn't feel any form of substance from the night before. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is where I'm supposed to be at. I think I was 19. Okay. Yeah, I was about 19 years old. After a night of full parties, and I, I looked down, I saw a couple people who were there the, the night before at the parties, and they were like, like shocked, like, oh my God, it's the dude I just drunk with the night before. He's up here praying for me, and I think that was part of my embarrassment. I think sometimes God has to embarrass you in order to sit you down, mm -hmm. in order for you to get the message, and I refuse to be embarrassed like that again. But since not for my name's sake, but it was for God's sake. Um, goofy. <laughs> And um, I've been told I'm crazy, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm very uh, demanding when it comes to individuals who I believe can do things. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like the Lord has called me to push people that don't feel like or don't think that they have a calling and a purpose on their lives. And I think that that's one thing that I, I, I've specialized the most in, is seeing something in people that they don't see in themselves. But I'm very family oriented. I love hanging out with our church family. I'm very down to earth from what our church says, and they think I'm crazy. I crack jokes all the time with our members. <laughs> I clown them like crazy. I, I have them all at my house many times. They're all coming over. I mean, I gotta, I'm in the office on the past. I got a Super Nintendo and a PlayStation. So after <laughs> church, like kids are in here playing PlayStation, and our diggers are like, Pastor, you can go home. Like, nah, I have to beat them in this you know, Street Fighter game. Yeah, so that's me. I'm, I'm very, very, very goofy guy. Yeah. And I, I, 
I love I love hanging out with our members. I love forming a family, a community mm -hmm. with our church. I don't like just Sunday morning relationships. Site rest is pivotal for the success of this community. It is the heartbeat of this community. And so it's important for St. Rest to maintain its relationship and the trust of our community. Mm -hmm. If we fail as a church, I think our community falls apart because we have opportunities to interact and to get things moving that other churches in certain areas do not have because of the longevity and the consistency in this community. A lot of churches kind of move around, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we don't feel like God has ever called us to move from this area. So this is where we're going to be at until the Lord says otherwise. And he has yet to say anything. We have an open space in the back that is full of dirt that has been there. Uh, it's been that way for like the last 40 years. So our plan is not to build a building. We don't need a bigger building right now. We can pack everybody in here. They can stand up if they want to. Mm -hmm. Our plan is to put a park back there because there is no green space in our, in our area. Yeah. Our plan is to put a playground there, benches there. So our families, when they come pick their kids up, says we have... We have so many kids that bus stop is right here across the street. So every day around 2.30, cars are piled up and lined up here to pick their kids up. Mm -hmm. After they finish picking their kids up, our front grass is full of people and families who are sitting there with spreads eating lunch. Why not have a park? Why not have um, benches that are available? Why not have a pavilion where we can do outdoor movie theaters and concerts for individuals to sit at? Yeah. That's why we're important to this community. Because everyone is waiting, what is St. Rest going to do next for us? Mm -hmm. And we have to provide it to them. We have to give them the love of Christ. And the love of Christ is not just sermons on Sunday mornings. It's building relationships and connecting with them Monday through Saturday so that they can receive the message on Sunday morning.